This is a follow-up on our popular LA Eviction Moratorium video that we did talking about the extension of the LA Eviction Moratorium. And we're here to explain how owner move-in for LA County works under the LA Eviction Moratorium. It is not easy. There are lots of hoops to jump through. This is a guide for tenants and landlords. We're going to run through the forms that are required and the steps that must be taken. And while it may seem that it's geared only towards landlords, it's actually for tenants to know as well to make sure that their landlords are following the steps appropriately. Hey there, Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates. We've been helping buyers and sellers and tenants and landlords make the best decisions and understand how to navigate these crazy days. This video was inspired by many folks that we've talked to and most recently by a YouTube subscriber named Oh, joyful one. She owns a house in Los Angeles County. They moved away years ago. Her and her husband moved to Illinois and are ready to come back. While they were in Illinois, they had a tenant in their home. That tenant now needs to move out so they can move into their home in Los Angeles and be with family again. Unfortunately, that home is under the LA eviction moratorium. It is going to be very difficult for them to get the tenant out legally. So this video is for people like them and for tenants out there whose landlords are not following the rules. Remember, we can't give tax or legal advice, but for the most honest and up-to-date real estate advice, subscribe to this channel. And the very first step in the process, hire an attorney who knows how to do this because you're going to need the help. All right, if you're ready to dive into owner move-in and under the Los Angeles eviction moratorium, hit that like button. And let's get started. So let's dive into understanding the owner move-in provisions under the Los Angeles County eviction moratorium. So we already discussed this further. Make sure you watch our other video on the LA County eviction moratorium. But what's important here is phase one and phase two. Phase one running from February 1st, 2022 through May 31st, 2022. Then we get into phase two, which is June 1st through December 31st, 2022. And there's going to be some different provisions there for owner move-in that'll be important. And we'll show you those. I have these links below, just like I had in the other video, but there's a big section here talking about owner move-in. And there's important things to remember that if you are going to move into the property under the owner move-in, no fault, just cause provision, you're gonna to have to live there for at least 36 months consecutively. It, the tenant in the unit, now listen carefully, the tenants in the unit must be current on rent payments and must not have been impacted by COVID-19. So this is for phase one. So if you are an owner trying to move in and the tenant is behind on rent, then you won't be able to in phase one. You'll have to wait until phase two where this provision drops off. Another important provision, and that is when you took ownership of the unit. So you'll see up here in phase one that if you own the unit before June 30th, 2021, you'll be able to take advantage of owner move-in. So this would help, for example, a joyful one who owned years ago, rented it out and is coming back. You owned it before June 30th, 2021. So you can take advantage of owner move-in, assuming you meet the rest of the criteria. Now, the other provision that changes in phase two after June 1st, 2022, is this one as well. So anybody who's acquired a property after June 30th, so July 1st on up and to today into June 1st of 2022. Once you hit phase two, then you can do the owner move in for properties that are required July 1st, 2021 or later. So that's important. A few other things to uh, run through that the qualifying family member must be a straight line so they could be the, either the owner, it could be a parent or grandparent, or it could be a son or grandson, also a spouse of the owner can move in. And they must be similarly situated. And that's always a tough one for me to say. I dove into that in the last video. I'm going to show you on this important form, a quick and easy way to see what similar, similarly situated means. That's so tough to say. You need to give at least a 60 day notice and you're going to have to pay tenant relocation assistance as required by the county's rent stabilization ordinance. Now, what's important there is the RSO, the rent stabilization ordinance applies to a smaller number of properties as related to rent caps. 
But for the most part, and talk to an attorney to clarify, most properties that are single family and bigger fall under the just cause provision in the county for RSO and fall under the requirement for relocation assistance, which we're gonna show you how much that is. Now, bear in mind that some areas may have a steeper fee, a steeper fine or steeper relocation assistance amount that's needed. So make sure you check the local city to see what their requirements are. Let's jump into the required paperwork for owner move-in. And this is also a handy guide to what you need to do and some of the different steps and pieces and parts. We're going to reference those while we run through this. So make sure you get the latest versions of these forms. They are periodically revised. Make sure you download the latest one to use it. So here's what you're going to need to do. This is an important form to fill out. And this is going to be completed and returned. You see up here, it essentially needs to go to the rent stabilization program. Unlike the rest of California, where if you terminate a tenancy, you drop off a 60 day notice, you don't really have to turn that notice into any governing body, but in LA you do. Let's run through this disclosure and we'll talk about filling it out. Some of it's easy, but some of it's not easy, of course. So look at uh, your steps. You're going to fill this out. You're going to sign and date in section six, and then you're going to submit a notice of the termination. So the 60 day notice you deliver, you're going to have to give them a copy. You're going to have to give proof of service, a special form. We're going to run through that. And you're going to send that all to the rent stabilization program. So make sure you have everything at the same time because there's actually deadlines. And if you miss the deadline, it's going to invalidate this process. So let's run through easy subject property, easy displaced occupant information. Those are the tenants that are going to have to move out. Now it's important here. Notice this section occupant of the dwelling unit is, and you check these boxes, 62 or older, disabled, terminally ill, or low income. Those are the four sections related to the similarly situated. And what that means is the owner moving in or the qualified occupant moving in, if you have any of these boxes checked, they have to match. And I'm going to show you where you declare if they match or not. So obviously answer truthfully, but just know that if any of these or all of these boxes are checked, the qualified occupant's going to have to have the same ones checked. Okay, moving on. So the uh, more space for a few different occupants. If you have more than, uh, what do they have, three boxes, make sure you include some more pages to show everybody. You don't want to miss anyone because it'll come back and bite you. Section three, and this is a section that they really don't talk about anywhere else, a relocation specialist. So other than the municipal code where it tells you you have to hire one, you need to hire a relocation specialist, put their information in here. Now, what is very difficult to find is to actually find a relocation specialist. I wasn't able to find one anywhere on LA uh, County's websites. Uh, they don't have a list. Of course, they have to approve it. The department has to approve whoever this person is, but they don't have a list of people who are already approved. If you Google it up, like my son Liam says, you can't really find a list anywhere. So you're going to rely on your attorney to help you find somebody. And you need to actually have this person lined up and approved before you start this process, because there won't be enough time once you deliver the notice and fill this out to wait to have you hire a relocation specialist. So again, rely on your attorney and then you'll check the boxes that the relocation specialist is uh, taken care of. There's some different categories. And then down here is the relocation assistance. You're going to write in the amount that you're giving the tenant, and we're going to talk about that more. Okay, so this is an important section. This is the person who's moving in to the property. So it's the owner move in, or it's one of these family members. And I already talked about this. It's that straight line, and they've got it right here. So this reminds you, it can be a grandparent, grandchild, child, domestic partner, parent, spouse, to straight line. No aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, they don't make it the cut. So you're going to put the name of that person. If it's you as the owner, you obviously put self. Remember what I said about similarly situated? Well, now if you've checked those boxes up above, you've got to make sure that the boxes match here 
that you at least have one, for example, if you check 62 or older for the tenant, you're gonna have to have one of these people moving in has to be 62 or older. So that's important. This is the similarly situated that they discuss in the legislation. It's laid out on this form. It's actually easy to understand when you see it on this form, but it's a very important part of the process that unfortunately a lot of people don't know when they think, oh, hey, I can move in. <laughs> this is great. I'm the owner. Let me get into my home. Let me get my property back. Well, these are the hoops you have to jump through. Bunch of certifications here. So the owner move-in only applies for single family mobile home, condo, duplex, or triplex. So if you have a fourplex or bigger, you can't move in under this. Then there's a bunch of other things here. We've discussed some of these others. Uh, I encourage you obviously to read through, download these forms and you can read through. You make sure you don't have COVID because then if you have COVID within 14 days, then uh, this process gets extended. So you're going to initial all these. Another interesting one, if it's a triplex, then you have to certify there isn't a vacant one and that you're seeking to displace the most recently occupied unit. So again, download these forms. So then you're going to sign this under penalty of perjury. So this form again is going to be filled out. It's going to go in with the notice to terminate tenancy and the proof of service form. Here's a quick rundown on the proof of service form that's going to go in with the other paperwork we discussed. And you can see here that it must be done in a timely fashion. It says service must be completed within the time frame indicated by Los Angeles County Codes. Well, don't worry, those links don't actually work. I tried them, so I had to hunt it down on my own. So you basically have five days if you actually look at the municipal code. So again, that's why you need to get your ducks in a row because you're not gonna have time to stumble through this. You're gonna miss your deadlines. You have five business days. Easiest thing may be to have a process server actually deliver it because they want a third party witness or they have room for a third party witness. So that'd be great if the process server actually could uh, be signing there. And and you can Google a process server and they'll appropriately serve the 60 day notice. And it's an extra layer of protection for you as a landlord and for the tenant to show it was done correctly. And your favorite part, the relocation assistance that's due. So this is a frequently asked questions document that was also linked before. And we'll make sure you got a link to it. What it does is it runs through a few frequently asked questions. It really doesn't go into much depth. You're not going to get a lot out of this. But this chart, this breakdown on the cost is really what you need. So you can see that the LA County relocation assistant amounts. And again, this is the minimum. Some areas you'll have to check may actually require more. These are the minimum amounts. So if it's just a standard tenant relocation, meaning there's nobody with seniors, there's no children, disabilities involved, they're not lower income. Those other categories you can see are more expensive. If it's just a normal standard owner move in, these are the amounts you're going to pay. So if you have a lovely three bedroom home that you'd like to move back into as a landlord, you will pay $13,115 as of the time of shooting this video. That is what you'll pay as relocation assistance to the tenant in addition to hiring that relocation specialist to help that tenant find a new place. So that these are the amounts there that you're gonna use. Make sure you have the latest version. And when do you pay the relocation assistance? It's not like cash for keys where you could wait till the last day to give it to them. No, you have actually two options despite what this form says, because I went to the civil code <laughs> to find it. And you can use an escrow account or you can give a direct payment and when does that need to happen? It needs to happen when you deliver the 60 day notice. So another duck to getting in the row would be to open that escrow account, deposit the money in, or write a check with that amount for direct payment. You're going to deliver that with the 60 day notice. That's why it'd be great to have, again, the process server, one extra layer of protection and verification. They're gonna drop off the notice. They're gonna drop off that check or uh, information on the escrow account. And they're going to provide proof that they dropped it off all at the same time. So we know we raced through that quickly. One more quick look. Remember, phase one, February 1st through May 31st, you are going to have to be a longer time owner of the property before you can move in. You must have owned it before June 30th, 2021. And your tenant has to be current on rent and not affected by COVID. Phase two... It can be a property that's been acquired at any point in time and the tenant does not have to be current on rent. So those are important distinctions. 
The rest of the hoops, that's what you're going to have to jump through for owner move-in. Let us know your questions below. I'm sure you're going to have a few of them. We'll do our best to get the answers or point you in the right direction. Make sure you subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter. Join over 2,000 others who are getting weekly updates on things like this, plus how the housing market's doing, more eviction moratoria updates, and a whole lot more. We appreciate you tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, and we want to hear from you.